Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Batemans, the home, as you all know, of Rudyard Kipling. He lived here for 34 years until his death in 1936. Quite a lot of the poems and other works that he wrote, he wrote here. If you've been round the house, you'll have seen his study, where it was all done. Quite a serious man. He was very private. He wanted to get away from London and the hustle and bustle. He was a well man. He had pneumonia. He suffered from duodenal ulcers, which was eventually the thing that killed him. Of course, in those days, they didn't have the benefit of CT scans, so the doctors then failed to diagnose it for him, just it had an upset tummy. And that went on for the best part of about eight years to eventually go and explode. That's that. A lot of his work, some of which you may be familiar with, some of which you may never have heard before, were written within that background. And the first one I want to read to you is an interesting one because it showed perhaps his own insight into his problems. He and Mrs. Kipling often had discussions about this first poem because Kipling knew his mistake. He was a chain smoker. And if you've been round the house you'll have seen ashtrays everywhere and you will have seen the smoke stained walls. But he knew he had a problem so he wrote this poem. It's entitled A Weed. One weed and only one had I. A weed, one weed and only one had I. One weed, the weediest one in all my store. One weed, with but one match to light it by. A weed was mine that now is mine no more. A weed, a weedy weed, was mine to smoke. Oh, I, I, oh, the match that burns and dies. My true love garmented in russet cloak. Oh, I, the flickering flame that flies. And one went out, and one refused to burn, and one expired, and the other would not draw, and both have failed me. Whither shall I turn? For withered weeds that shall be mine no more. Oh, a smoker's lament. As I said, most of the work, especially his poems, relate to what he could see from those windows. When he was in his study, he had a wonderful view out over the estate. And in those days, one of the things that were very prevalent, not quite so much this year for some reason, but certainly in past years, were the butterflies of the garden. And so, Ian Kipling, he had to write a poem about it. And it's entitled Butterflies. One thing you learn about Kipling, he wasn't the best of naming his poems. <laughs> they <were> fairly obvious. <laughs> Eyes aloft over dangerous places. The children follow the butterflies. And in the sweat of their upturned faces, slash with a net at the empty skies. 
so it goes. They fall amid brambles and sting their toes on the nettle tops till after a thousand scratches and scrambles they wipe their brows and the hunting stops. Then to quiet them comes their father and stills the riot of pain and grief saying little ones go and gather out of my garden a cabbage leaf. You will find on it whorls and clots of dull grey eggs that properly fed turn by way of the worm to lots of glorious butterflies raised from the dead.